Man, this is what bugs me out about these movie niggas, bro. About these actor niggas, bro. It literally comes down to this. So, obviously Drake Bell, he pulls up. He does the quiet on set docu docuseries where he basically talks about how while he was a child actor, he had been abused. He had been sexually abused by Brian Peck, who was, I, I believe, his vocal coach, if I'm not wrong. Um, during his time on Nickelodeon, I think it was when he was said he said when he was on Drake and Josh and the Amanda show. So, oh dear. So, you know, he goes and he does his thing. Does he you know he drops the vid and everything like that? But it always sat in a weird spot for me because, bro, the man himself. And and see, the thing about it is, it makes it hard for me to look at somebody as, um. Oh man, you know, you're a victim, you're a product of this, you're a product of that. I understand that certain certain actions definitely do cause reactions and outcomes and shit like that, but here's my point. So I remember a minute ago, bro, he had gotten caught up for talking to a minor and a minor and he actually had fled and went to Mexico, changed his name to Drake Campania, I think, which is Bell in Spanish. And, you know, he was singing music out there and stuff like that. And then I believe he had to come back because it was time for him. You know, he had to go to court. He had to do, do what he had to do. And he pleaded guilty to endangerment of a minor. You dig what I'm saying? Now, going through all of this, I'm kind of peeping because that was just the premise of what was going on. Cause like, I thought dude had faded into oblivion and then he popped up with this series and I was like, what is the point? Like the whole time, I understand the point. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, what is he really trying to do? What is really, you know, his goal with all of this is my, is, I guess is my point. Because I remember, bro, Dan Schneider, all them dudes, bro. People have been talking about them forever, forever. Uh, Dan Schneider, Brian Peck. I think he went to jail already for the same, if not similar uh, charges. I think he had, yeah, he molested a kid, I believe. Went to jail, popped out, you know, and I mean, he, I guess he kept going, but we'll read some of this. So, and even just some of the, def not deflecting language, but it's just some of the openness of the language. It's kind of strange because like I said, I'm going to read it, but it's kind of strange because it doesn't actually speak on what the brother did when I remember it, it was everywhere what he had done so anyways look uh Bell discovered oh Bell discusses how his trauma let him down a dark path there was and then he says Drake says there was oh well, Drake Bell says there's definitely a slow decline in my mental health and sobriety I mean DUIs behaviors that were oh, that, oh behaviors that were happening because I was lost Right after Drake and Josh have a sign, and I released my second album. Okay. And then, so he had an issue staying sober. You know, it is what it is. But that's not what I'm looking for. Okay. In 2021, Bell pleaded guilty to a felony charge of attempted child endangerment and a misdemeanor charge of uh, disseminating. Uh, what is it? Disseminating matter harmful to juveniles. Disseminating. What does disseminating mean? Spread. What the? F okay, so spreading matter harmful to juveniles. I don't know what that means, but he pleaded guilty because. So if you plead guilty, then that means that you're guilty. If you plead guilty. I mean, obviously, there's ways of pleading guilty when you're not guilty, but this brother pled, pled guilty, so I'm going to treat him as a such. Um, related to... Okay. So, he was having inappropriate text messages with a teenage girl in 2017. That was what... That was what he had... You know, that was what had gone on back in the day. That was what he got caught up for. And the thing about it is this. I'm a skeptical guy. I don't believe much of what I see. I believe half of what I hear. Excuse me, I don't believe half of what I see and I believe don't believe much of what I hear. So my thing is, whenever somebody does something like this, it serves almost no true benefit to come out with this other than 
Cause, cause look, it's like, like, how do I say? If you're gonna do this, there has to be a means to an end, right? So now everybody's speaking on Drake Bell in more favorable terms. I think that he's trying to make kind of a comeback into the entertainment business, even though he's had such a stain on his record, which was the, his last outing, was you know his the, the stain on his record where he had been talking to a minor and shit. But after he pleaded guilty, he was only he was sentenced to two years of probation, two hundred hours. Okay, the epitome of evil. He said the sentencing hearing hearing was the the victim called Bell the epitome of evil, and accused the actor of grooming that began when she was twelve years old, before allegedly sexually abusing her at fifteen. He was calculating. He preyed on me and he sexually abused me. She said. Also accused him of. of Sending her pictures of his genitals, he is a monster and a danger to children. So then the actor was not charged for doing anything physical. Yeah, okay. Existing at the time that contact included only text messages. Damn, bruh. So I think that he dropped this because it's a play. I believe it's a play for him to be able to come back into the scene. And, and and be back in the favor of the people while this is on his jacket. Now, people are easily manipulated, you know what I mean? Especially by a good enough story. So I feel it. I feel his I feel his approach. But don't forget, you know what I mean? The same things that he's saying, not exact same things, but the things that he's saying, you know, oh, they did this, they did that when I was young, 15. Brother, you you pleaded guilty to doing the same, not the exact same thing, but, you know, you pleaded guilty to doing the same shit, which is chatting with minors, fuck with minors, blah, blah, blah. And the thing about it is, if you're at the gym and you're fighting, you're fighting or whatever, with the gym and fighting, I don't know, bro, I'm literally running off for like three hours of sleep. What was I saying? What was I saying? Forgive me. Text messages, not photos or anything sexual in nature. Took responsibility for that, you know. Oh yeah, my bad. Here I go. Here I go. Okay. So if you're in a situation where this the last the last thing that that your last outing left a stain or in on your jacket and a bad, bad taste in the public's mouth, um, you know you're gonna kind of want to do anything you can to get unblackballed, which I believe that he is or that he was. We haven't seen him on anything since that hell shit went down until now and i do not think that i think that it's the perfect timing given the fact that you got the diddy stuff you got all this stuff so he's like hey let me just go ahead and tell my stories and this and this and that let me go ahead and, and because although it, it, it had happened to him and it was tragic you know it's terrible that it happened i also see the play in this so here's my point do not walk around feeling sorry for uh, I say do not walk around feeling sorry for Drake Bell in this situation because although yes he had gone through what he had gone through dog still uh, on some on some predator on some predator vibes he's still a predator and you could say oh he was bred to be a predator because of what happened to him but listen I, I know a lot of people that have been you know been through some crazy stuff when they were young and they didn't become predators off the rip. That's just not a constant. That's just not a rule that this is an exception to. No. Dog dog chose to be a predator. And he never he never said that he didn't do it. He said he did what was asked of me. What does that even mean? But the media grabbed a hold of it so of so much misinformation and it absolutely destroyed me. Listen, man. All right. I understand. There's a lot of creeps in the, you know, Hollywood and all that type of stuff. Holly weird, if you will, whatever. I understand. But let's not let's not um, you know, turn our brains off just because somebody popped up with a with a really good story about the things that had gone on at Nickelodeon back in the day. And you know, they're sad and everything like that. But I don't know, bro. This shit just doesn't sit right with me making a play off of this. 
when you've literally been accused of not quite the same thing, but the same thing. How did you know, throw your thoughts in the comment section? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about the fact that, you know, he boom, he popped out. He told his story right at the perfect time when the Diddy shit is going on right at the perfect time where he's been blackballed long enough to where people may have even forgotten what he had done. Now, the article obviously tells on him because that that is like not necessarily the conflict of interest but for him, but it's just kind of white and red. I don't know. It's like, it's just like, it feels a little disingenuous. It feels a little disingenuous. That's all I'm, that's all I'm going to say. It feels disingenuous. And that's just my skepticalness talking, my skeptical nature coming out. So leave your thoughts in the comment section, bro. I'm literally about to take the fattest snap after this because I am so tired. But after you leave your thoughts in the comment section, press all the YouTube buttons. Leave like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm.